okay, it runs the circuit and the other battery does what? Charges. It charges. This, okay, so it charges the battery? Yeah. So, oh. what happens here is, let me first go with the, the standard circuit looks like that, okay? Right? This is the, the solid state, and this is the non-solid state, the one everybody's familiar with. So one battery is charging the other? Is that what's going on? Right. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, I know. It's great. I, you know, it's funny. I didn't really know that it was doing that when I picked the circuit out, but I liked what I saw, so I grabbed on it and just jumped on it. And, and it uh, doesn't look too complicated. It's not. So it, it's just not so obvious to understand what's going on. Okay. So let me explain it to you, and then it will become obvious. I guarantee you that. It took me a while to clarify what's going on here. But what's going on here is you have the, 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 the battery that runs the circuit right here, right? It sends oh. the, po the positive this way into the coil, right? It goes through the coil and it has to go this way, right? To get to the negative, okay? To charge up the coil, right? Right. It has to wait for this transistor to close though for that to happen. So you have to trigger the transistor at the base. And... You see this magnet up here? Mm -hmm. Okay, when it lands right here. So that's a spinning magnet. Is that like on a flywheel or something? Yeah, yeah. it's on a wheel. Uh, magnets on a wheel, evenly spaced. And when it lands, um, hold on. When it lands right here, there's supposed to be a core here, iron core. So when it lands over the iron core, and this is a bifather, by the way, these two coils are wrapped together in bifather. This is your, uh, your 20. Six, I think it was gauge, and this is your 28 for your trigger, and it's about 150, 150 feet of each wire twisted around each other, and then you wrap it around the bobbin and you put a core in it right there. So when the the magnet is north field here and it lands over the core, what it's going to do is it's going to charge up the trigger winding right here. Okay. Okay. And it's going to give it about five volts from the magnet or whatever, two volts. That's all you need. So. The is that volts. dependent on like how big the magnet is? Sort of, yeah. It's, so the magnets are like ferrite magnets, one inch by two inch by half inch or something. And the core is like one inch thick for, and you know, you need your core material to be the same thickness as your magnet, usually, your face of your magnet. And, but with Bedini, he made the magnet the same thickness as the core material plus the thickness of the winding around it, which is about an inch and three quarters or something, two inches. So you have like a magnet that's passing over not only the core, but also the uh, coils around it for the core. Hmm. So it's better that way too, I agree. And that when this magnet passes over the core and the coils, because they're bifiler, I guess this guy radiates a lot easier with the magnet pass and gets you the five volts or two to five volts. Something to do with the magnetic fields of each uh, lines of wire compressing on top of one another in the twisted form, maybe? Yeah, something like that. It yeah. helps you get more voltage. And mm -hmm. then it sends the five volt through the resistor. It's a variable resistor. And the 100 ohm resistor right there is 100 ohms. Okay. And, uh, this is your 5K or 1K variable, whatever you want to add to your resistance so you can tune it better but um so the five volts goes through here and it hits the base if you notice that right and you know to make sure that this base gets uh triggered you need the uh the, the so the positive five volts is going here to the base right that's right. the positive positive five volts from this excuse me from this coil right positive five volts is going out this way and from this same coil negative five volts is going out this way if you trace it, it can go right here to the emitter. Bing. And that means you're going to trigger bing, the bing. base. You see what I'm nice. saying? Yeah. You, see, you understand that, right? So that coil, right. because it's connected to the emitter and the base, and you charge it with five volts, you're going to you're going to be able to um, you're going to be able to um, trigger the transistor and get the uh, the the base and the, the emitter and the collector to close. Okay, and so this switch is going to now close, right? And that means you're going to allow this positive from this run battery, it's the it's running the system, to flow through this coil, right through here, okay, onto the negative. 
And by doing so, by closing this gate and allowing this flow right here and this right here to the coil, right there, the coil, mm -hmm. you charge up the coil with the length of this gate being closed. And next thing you know, it opens after that, right? When this opens, the coil no longer gets charged. Okay. And remember, when this coil is getting charged, it's getting charged with this positive here and this negative here on this side of the coil. So basically this positive is gonna appear here on the coil and this negative is gonna appear here on the coil. But that's gonna, when you remove mm. this charge and this gate opens, that's gonna change. And this positive is gonna become a negative and this negative is gonna become a positive. So what you're gonna have is this. Oh, so it switches it. Okay. First, you're going to have this when you charge it because you have your positive here mm -hmm. and, it and it touches this side of the coil and your negative touches that side of the coil. And the next time when the gate opens, when this opens and you no longer have charge, the polarity flips and you're going to have this. Interesting. And then what? When you have that, what happens when you have a negative here and a positive here? Well, let's look at this diode for a second and this battery. And this is high voltage positive and high voltage negative. And this is a high voltage diode. One end So what is the range specifically for high voltage? Um, well, at one end 4007 can handle over a thousand volts or around a thousand. Some of them a little awesome. less, some of them a little more. And then I guess the, the diodes that can handle more voltage can handle less amps, but they can handle more voltage. Okay, that makes sense. Stuff like that. So when you see this positive can go straight through this diode now because of right. the way the diode's facing and it hits the battery, charges it up. Oh, and it's closing that circuit now. The negative goes this way, close the circuit, right. When you open this, it, it, it goes, it, it collapses. The field collapses on the coil and it goes this way. When you, when you open this, first you close it to charge it with this battery, you charge the coil, and then you open it to allow the field to collapse and the polarity flip and dump into this battery. Hmm. In reverse polarity though. See, that's not so obvious. You see what I'm getting at here? Yeah, because the diode is facing to, to the right. Right, and you're like, well, where's your positive coming from to charge this battery? Right. And where's your negative from? Because you're not a, you're not expecting this coil to go so positive it's... on this end and negative on this end. You're not right. expecting that. You're not expecting that. Yeah, that because, doesn't make sense. <laughs> because, because you're giving positive on this end, not negative. And you're giving negative on this end, not positive. So the energy is technically Here's how flowing the in the negative. reverse direction it's supposed to flow in that circuit. Right, only when the field collapses. And that's why I think he calls it an open circuit because the gate is open when that happens. When this guy gets charged, oh. I said this before, I, I think you heard me. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so that's why I think he calls this an open circuit because when this opens, this coil reverses polarity and sends that polarity right. into this battery here. That's the charge. That's crazy. Yeah, you know, we see that um, that uh, same um, technique a lot in certain devices, like the Nunes design. 